Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today, I'm going to talk about fear again and the kinds of things under, underlie this strange once-in-a-lifetime, at least for the, much of us in the West, uh, mass hysteria, crowd uh, madness that we're uh, experiencing. Uh, we talked a few Science Moments ago about fear and how perception of fear is different than the perception of other sorts of things. And in fact, there's three broadly distinguishing features of the perception of fear that makes it fundamentally dangerous, fundamentally different than other kinds of perceptions. Start off with the first one. So for example, let's think about snakes. Snakes are different than, than flamingos and, and cucumbers and all of the kind of other kinds of things. It just takes one experience with family members or friends seeing a snake on the ground and them freaking out. For the rest of your life, you're going to treat it as a scary thing. It just takes one training experience. Um, for a flamingo, you can get kids to be afraid, in, you know, really deeply afraid of a flamingo, but it's going to require dozens and dozens or hundreds of training sessions where you freak out when you see a flamingo. It takes a lot of work because we have an innate sense, an innate predisposition to be afraid of snakes. We have a similar kind of predisposition for disgusting things, pussy, gross. The idea of cooties, anything that could be something, whether it even looks that way, the idea of something that's infectious and gross hits this disgust instinct that we naturally have. This is this notion that, that cooties underlies that kids talk about. Cooties is not even necessarily visible. It can be secretly there. It doesn't, you don't have to see it. In many kinds of cultural revolutions, the bourgeoisie, they may look like anybody, but they can still be infected with this kind of bourgeois uh, attitude. Jews, whether they look like you or not, they can be dirty. Haram and people that are not following the Islamic religion can be still nevertheless unclean. These things can be asymptomatic and you can still be disgusted by the very idea of it because in the idea of infection, we have an innate proclivity to be afraid of it. That's the first big difference. It doesn't take much for us to become afraid. The second is there's this positive feedback loop that we talked about a few science moments ago in the death spiral of fear. It's not merely the case that, for example, um, if I'm thirsty, it can make me actually be more likely to see water. But merely seeing water doesn't make me thirsty, or at least this feedback loop doesn't necessarily happen. But um, if I see a tiger, I might be afraid. But if I'm afraid, I'm also more likely to see tigers and more you know, bugaboos at night. This is what gets us heightened and heightened and we're running toward our car to get the keys out to drive away because something has spooked us. And not only that, there's that positive feedback even for ourselves to perceive and get afraid and that causes us to perceive fear more, which makes us more afraid and see things that are not there. If I see Doug afraid of something that can make me afraid. And if I get afraid, that can make him afraid. And so on, it goes around the tribe around us. We make one another afraid in a positive feedback loop that doesn't happen for thirst or other kinds of perceptions of things. But a third, and this is probably the deepest reasons for why fear, and it's not just fear per se, but a specific type of fear is, is, is disproportionately dangerous. If we were all afraid of fear of, of snakes falling out of the sky, sure, we'd be afraid of snakes but we could huddle together under giant snake umbrellas that protect us from the snakes. Lots of the kinds of things that we might be afraid of um, require us to band together. They say, hey, we've got to do this together, truly, socially together, in order to block it and to defend ourselves. But pandemics and fear of infection is the exact opposite. Anybody around you could be the source of that infection, even if they're asymptomatic. The solution to pandemics is to cut the human social ties to all others, which is what makes us human, what makes us enjoy life. You have to stay in your home. You can't see anybody else. If you do go out, stay away from everybody, six feet, 10 feet, as far as you can. If you actually are near them at all, put masks on, cover your identity, cover your ability to communicate, cover your ability to socially express yourself. All of the social signals, all of the social connections that matter in human life are exactly what has to be cut for this particular fear, fear of a pandemic. That's why pandemics and are the most dis the dis are, are the da most dangerous thing that we uh, have to fear in terms of, uh, uh, of society and the kinds of authoritarianism that can sneak in and, uh, uh, and swipe all the freedoms that we love away. And that was your science moment.